The UK Minister for Defence Procurement James Heapy had said in February this year that there will be a government-to-government -government agreement between India and UK for the joint development of a jet engine, after which Indian officials carried out meetings to discuss the proposal made by the British firm Rolls-Royce in detail, and it seems that after internal deliberations both India and UK have reached the final stage of signing the agreement for the joint engine development. The senior vice president of Rolls-Royce India and Southeast Asia Louise Donaghy has confirmed that India and UK are ready to sign the agreement to jointly develop a new engine based on the EJ200, and the best part is that India will get the intellectual property rights of the new engine. We are seeking to change the game, and we are very close to an imminent agreement between our two governments to co-create a new jet engine. That will be Indian-owned IP. Um, and that is a very clear commitment from my nation in partnership with your nation to create self-reliance. Because the Rolls-Royce of the future knows that this isn't about exporting hardware to India. This is about exporting IP. The EJ200 engine generates 90 kN of wet thrust, and the new engine variant will use new enhancement package to meet the thrust class requirements of India's 5.5 generation AMCA program, along with other indigenous fighter jet programs like the Tejas Mark 1A, medium weight fighter and the twin engine deck based fighter, which have a total requirement of 3000 engines in their lifespan. It is also to be noted that the EJ200 powers the Eurofighter Typhoon, which is also competing in the 114 fighter jets MMRCA program. The Indo-Israeli joint venture of Israel Weapon Industries and the Indian firm PLR System which currently manufactures the Teva 7.62x51mm rifles in India, will start the manufacturing of the newly developed Carmel and Arad rifles of Israel for infantry soldiers and Indian special forces, and they will also be exported to foreign countries. The Arad can be changed easily to use two different calibers, 5.56mm and 7.62x35mm, and is designed to address the needs of special forces, while the Carmel is a 5.56x45mm caliber rifle for extended combat duration. The US will complete the user tests of the AGM-158C long-range anti-ship system by 2026, and it will be offered to all the P-8 operators including the Indian Navy, which is currently the second biggest operator of P-8 maritime aircraft after the US Navy. The AGM-158C is a stealthy anti-ship cruise system with a range of 1,000 km, and is equipped with sophisticated autonomous targeting capabilities, mid-course guidance, low-altitude profile and obstacle avoidance algorithms, and can detect and target a specific ship within a group of vessels. South Korea has urged India to conclude the deal for K-30 anti-aircraft system, which was selected by the Indian Army in 2018. The Indian Army wanted to procure 104 K-30 systems, 97 ammunition carriers, 39 command vehicles, 4,928 missiles and 172,260 rounds of ammunition, bringing the contract's total value to $2.5 billion. After signing logistics agreement with Australia, India and Japan have fast-tracked the conclusion of their military logistics agreement known as the Acquisition and Cross-Servicing Agreement, under which Japan would be able to gain access to strategic Indian facilities in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands near the Strait of Malacca, while India would have access to Japan's naval facility in Djibouti in East Africa, and other potential bases in Japanese territory. Top experts have said that Japan and US will offer advanced defense systems to the Quad members, and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands might come up as the headquarter of Quad operations.